Welcome, age of vintage society. There goes the tough but moderate cowboy figure, the macho square jaw, straight nose and remarkably indulgent eyes that made him the right mixture of male attraction. Guy Madison suddenly made it to the screen and got a spot among the few Hollywood's original beefcakes. He became famous for his charming physique rather than his acting talent. But that's just one positive. What about the few questionable romantic mysteries surrounding his career life? How Guy Madison's love life led to homosexual gossips. I want you to know, my viewers, how much I appreciate you. Without your support, these videos wouldn't be possible. Thank you for those who hit the thanks button and for the Patreons. Few personalities in Hollywood are described as interesting, even as some have the term attention-grabbing shrouding their erratic career life. Like Guy Madison, a man so charming as to make ladies fall off the cinema balconies while trying to catch a glimpse of him. That was the situation in 1944 when Madison made his first appearance in the movies. This picture-perfect masculine aptness was keenly marketed via a regular stream of cautiously sexualized images taken at the seashore and without his shirt on. A practice that positioned him at the centre of a new set of male celebrities that the mid-twentieth century movie lovers quickly tagged the beefcake to correspond with the cheesecake of the female actresses that did not just become sex symbols but excelled on a similar platform of marketing their beauty rather than talent. Following the shift from the golden age of Hollywood to an era of hurriedly made B-movies and low-budget television series, producers used this as a way of attracting attention, and it worked. Luckily, one of the luckiest fellows, Guy Madison, was a benefactor of this image projection. The gift of a man, they say, makes a way for him. Is that also the case with Guy Madison? He was off duty as a Coast Guard sailor when he was spotted by a talent scout, as he materialised at a live broadcast show of Lux Radio Theatre. Good-looking and appealing, without any acting knowledge, he was drafted to perform a walk-on sailor role in the all-star war drama Since You Went Away, that faithful 1944. Growing up as a teenager, it never occurred to him that he could make a living from his natural endowment or be an actor, even though he may have heard of it enough. A story was told of how, after discerning the excitement of movies, Madison continued lurking the hills of Hollywood, toasting at his representative's pool looking for work. When he could not find work, he would hustle in other things until luck came his way. He got to learn that he was good-looking enough to be a movie star, the same look and body that had served him as study-served doctors would give him the much-desired movie break. Guy Madison became one of the most notable faces in America at his time with his role in television's Wild Bill Hickok. To say the obvious, the program made him one of the biggest screen stars and a TV icon. His apparent handsomeness provided a regular job within four decades of his entertainment career. Madison, who began as a male pin-up or what you can call a sex symbol with a brief appearance, had gathered a flood of fan mail, which enticed him to quickly return to the movies after the war. His early presence in the movie business may have been because of his sex appeal with the ladies. It worked sometimes and failed other times for lack of experience. He also got a fancy screen name for himself that erroneously linked him with an ex-president, a name inspired by Dolly Madison Cakes. After appearing in about fifty movies, mainly war genre and westerns, one major thing that caught my interest about this handsome beauty is his love life during this period. Is it true that he had a tang for wild women? He dated the controversial Barbara Payton and wedded Gail Russell. Both had unique issues of drunkenness. I'm wondering how that has to be with a man who was the lady's heartthrob. Was it because of his acclaimed shyness? Some even linked him to homosexuality. Guy Madison was deeply troubled when newsmen gathered around his Santa Monica City Hall. They were on the trail of the hottest Hollywood celeb to land fabulously into state trouble for heavy drinking, and the victim is Madison's wife. His wife of four and a half years at the time was being prosecuted for drunk driving. Despite separating from him for nearly a year amid stormy marital life, 
she remained Gail Russell Madison. Madison's name was being dragged into scandalous publicity. It worried him so much. But is it true Guy Madison had no ambitions growing up in central California, his place of birth in 1922? I heard he lived a life that was rather ordinary with his railroad operator father and a homemaker mother. Born as Robert Ozell Mosley and raised in a large humble family alongside his four siblings, where he was tutored to follow rules, worked to earn money and stay out of trouble. Maybe less guidance was provided so he had to depend on his instinct, less bragging and judiciously earn his wages based on that cautious background. After leaving Bakersfield Junior College and briefly working as a telephone linesman, Madison enlisted for United States Navy service in 1942 as the war rages. When he was spotted by Henry Wilson and recommended for David O. Selznick's Vanguard Pictures, it was more than an opportunity for Madison. Wilson, who was stunned by his good looks, quickly changed his name, as customary to his pool of talents from Mosley to Madison, and gave him the bit role as a sailor in Since You Went Away, produced by Selznick. His three minutes of screen presence was just enough to make the ladies go crazy with thousands of fan letters entering the studio, talking about him. It was an eye-opener for him, so he returned to his military duty post with one eye on the movies. As soon as his stint in the military ended, Madison hurried back to Selznick, who put him up for RKO Pictures for a lead role in Till the End of Time. Inexperienced Madison got criticised for his wooden acting in the movie. Not even a nice combination between Madison and Shirley Temple in Honeymoon could do much to his obvious lack of acting skills. The immediate effect was a downturn in his acting career. A friend of mine once said he was limited in acting, but thanks to his good looks. Selznick discarded this Prince Charming, but somehow he got another opportunity in what appeared like his second coming in 1951, when he took the title role in the TV drama The Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok. By the time the series was over in 1955, Madison was already a superstar. As I said earlier, I'm particularly curious about Madison's love life and why he did not have it so good with women, despite his prettiness and sex appeal. This no doubt prompted many to speculate that he was a homosexual, but how true is that? After marrying Gail Russell in 1949, everyone thought they were a perfect match, being a union between a heartthrob and a young, beautiful female movie sensation. Recall that Gail Russell was at the time one of the upbeat young stars in Hollywood before luck ran out of her, and things also went south, just like it was for Madison at some point. It is also possible that his marriage with Gail may have suffered greatly during the period of dryness in his career, and she must have thought that his career was dead, just like many thought. I still recall how they came together. It was reported that Wilson was worried about how unselective Madison was with his sex life back then, in the studio, which was different from what Hollywood projected in the 1940s. It became a moral burden for the studio that needed to keep his contract. The story was that Madison was more drawn to the boys than the ladies, and was said to have kept his romantic life secret and very private. Wilson was credited for insisting that he gets married. One thing leads to another. Madison was married to Gail Russell. The same condition was given to Rory Calhoun, who was also fingered to have had a slight inclination to homosexuality, even though he liked more of the women than he did the men. He equally obeyed and married in 1948 Lita Baron, and in 1949 Madison and Calhoun were in Arizona, where they appeared together in a movie titled Massacre River, with observers suggesting that the two might have been running the romantic show together, not minding their marriages. Those in the know said that his relationship and marriage with Gail may have had some challenges early enough after they came together, though their courtship had been similar to that of two shy personalities who probably had much of their privacy protected, and as such, it was fun and they appeared to love each other. Gail was described as a naturally shy person whose nature affected her acting career, the reason she took to drinking. I learned that she was not comfortable being a screen star and had boosted her ego at a tender age with alcohol influence. As their union began, it was not clear if Madison was faithful to Gail, the reason she turned more to drinking, and the result was a dysfunctional marriage where they had to fight regularly. 
The deeper she immersed herself in alcohol, the more they quarrelled and further alienation. There was no reason why such a marriage should stand the test of time. Russell did not help matters as her drinking and weird behaviour went out of control, leading to Madison going for a divorce. That union endured for about five years before their final separation, but before then a lot of things happened. More remarkably was the day Gail had to face justice as a result of her reckless drinking and driving. A beautiful young lady with her little figure was more remorseful standing in the courtroom during her trial. Reports said that she put some kind of struggle two days earlier when she was first arrested, probably still under the influence at the time. At the hearing, her lawyer and Madison's business manager were at her side in the courtroom. Madison himself waited outside the premises, ready to offer moral support to his estranged wife who still bears his name. When the evidence was read against her, that Russell was visibly confused as she tried to answer questions at the point of arrest, the police officers had noticed that her words were very disjointed. She failed to pass double sobriety examinations. Gail listened with anger on her face, but was more composed as she told the court that she was not guilty. Minutes after, she was facing a horde of media men with their nosy questions, but she ignored everyone and joined Guy Madison, who was patiently waiting at his car. As the session ended, Madison drove her away from the probing eyes of the media to her home, and rested with her to console her from the lingering fear that seemed apparent in her life, the fear of being left alone and deserted by friends. The sudden change in attitude was quite remarkable, from Russell, who two days ago had been unreasonable and almost panic-stricken, to a more reflective Russell. This disreputable arrest added a smear to her already ruined image and success story, after her name was mentioned in connection with the John Wayne divorce case. Hours before her arrest, Guy Madison was fast asleep in a single-man apartment, not knowing that his estranged wife was roving around the city with a car alone, and unfortunately bemused and lost. She even told the police that she was practically spiritually lost in the vortex of intense emotions. After the trial, Madison was faithfully at her side, and she showed more confidence and compassion. Rumours later went viral that the two have, or at least are expected to reconcile, especially with the search-and-rescue effort put up by Madison before, during, and after the trial, and perhaps start a fresh chapter in their lives. But a section of media had reported some days back, before the incident, that Guy Madison had spoken about their marriage and that he would not reconcile with her, even though divorce he had started was not coming up soon. Gail was still trying to recuperate from the trauma that she has gone through and would need time to be able to think rationally. Their conversation was such that showed repentance on both sides. Would Madison continue the heartless slamming of doors? Maybe there was still a chance they get back together, but that happened for a brief period. Madison took her to Seattle, where he hoped she would join a famous sanitarium so she could intensively have a psychotherapeutic cure away from the stress of the Hollywood world. He was sure Gail needed such assistance. She also agreed to his suggestion, but the information was kept secret from the gossip media. Everyone involved was cooperative, including the couple's close friends and colleagues. One major reason the union had so much trouble in the first place was Gail's strange depressive mood that Madison had to grapple with. It is the same reason her once brilliant career halted. Gail was highly sensitive to things around her and found herself regularly depressed that she became incapacitated and unable to cope with any of her daily responsibilities. On why he married her, even with her moody nature, Madison said he thought he could make her happy. If not, he would not have married her. But it became apparent he failed in that regard not with the fresh family responsibility that took over, which neither of them could perfectly handle. Even after seeking medical help from time to time, Gail's life kept spirally downward. She initially refused to part with Madison and begged him not to send her away. Unfortunately, the arrangement for her to stay in Pinal Sanitarium in Seattle failed because Gail couldn't go through the process. Things were unbearable for Madison, who needed to return to Hollywood's busy schedule, but Gail felt better with every moment spent with her husband. Back home and alone, Madison was working around the clock just to take care of both ends of his frustrating life and career. Once he was asked how he was coping with the troubling atmosphere in his family, he told interviewers, 
I don't want anyone worrying about me. He was sure that the union was over, not because there was any man in Gail's life or another woman in his life, but as a matter of necessity. Guy Madison later married actress Sheila Connolly in Juarez, Mexico, and had three girls before his death in 1996, when he turned 74. Many handsome actors were marketed for their beauty rather than talent. You have to check this video. James Drury, the cowboy actor who lived by the code. Let's check it out. <laughs> 